I am jo Dr. Joan Emmy Gaither. I am a artist, educator, documentary story quilter, activist. And I've been quilting from the soul, is what I call it, since the year 2000. And um, the manner in which I quilt uses a little bit of anything and everything that the quilter, the storyteller, deems important. So it's um, a little bit of traditional quilting, but I move my work beyond just the squares, um, uh, the individual squares that are pieced together. Um, because many times early quilts were made just to keep you warm and to protect you, and they were made from memory cloth, from fabric that was somebody's baby blanket or a wedding dress or something like that. So it's the memory of the cloth. When I'm quilting from the soul, I think that the fabric can hold not just the memory of the cloth, but it can hold the whole story. It can show in picture, in text, in words, the people, the places, and the events, and just make that a total document in itself. So one of the pieces that were currently in the show here at the Ward um, Museum um, is storytelling with purpose with myself, Dr. Joan Emmy Gaither. And one of the quotes in the show, this is a small replica of that piece. And it's the freeing of the slaves in Maryland emancipation in 1864. So um, there are 36 squares um, all together. And the top third of this quilt are the colors of the Maryland flag, and then the bottom third of the bottom half of the Maryland flag, and through the middle, the blue, very intently represents Annapolis and the role that Annapolis played in the signing and the freeing of the slaves, November 1st, 1864. Um, around the edges, again, are pieces, so it's like these that have been just stitched together, that then have been used to uh, tell the story. It's the crops, it's maps, it's anything that gives you a sense of place and time and people and events. So when you come down to the show, and I understand it's open up till the end of May, uh, please come and take a look. The original of this quilt is 10 feet 4 inches by 10 feet 4 inches. So this is quite small comparatively, but each square tells a story, and today what I want to do is to just get you started on making your own individual square to tell your own individual story that only you can tell because it's your story. So I'm going to move this out of the way for the moment. Um, I made this so that it's like my own little lap blanket. Uh-oh. Uh so I'm going to move this out of the way for the moment and say, boy, that's really a lot. How do you get started? Uh, and I like to think about um, just initially, what really is your story? Uh, I'm going to say that in the kids that you'll get will be what I like to call the quilt sandwich. It's the top piece that you would use to put your design on. It's a piece of batting, and in this case, it's a real piece of batting. When I first started, I was using t-shirts, just piled up and stuffed in to give that feeling, comfy feeling. And then there's a back piece, the bottom uh, part of your sandwich, and that I'll show you in a bit how to fold that over and actually get started. But before we do that, I want to just um, show you how to just begin to think about what am I going to put on my what am I going to put on my square? And I have to warn you that when I started this, this single little square went from one to six, and it went to twelve and twenty-four and thirty-six. So it's like the more I was making, the more I wanted to make. 
So just be mindful that as you start this, um, this one square, uh, it may end up being multiple squares. So what are you going to put on this first square that you're going to make? I take a piece of just regular paper um, and I fold it in thirds both ways. You see that? Just kind of crisp it down. And when I open it up, I really have nine sections. And so that you're able to see it, oftentimes I will just use a marker or my pencil and just outline to make sure these are definite. Okay, if you don't have any paper to do that, you can do the same thing with post-it notes. And I like to stick them down on the table where I'm working and that center square, this is where we're gonna brainstorm and get our ideas. And I have to tell you, this is how I get started with my own quilts. What, what, what is this about? Who is this about? Where is it? Um, is this about me? Or is it about somebody that's really important to you, who's helped to shape your life? So I always think about myself. One of my junior high teachers, art teachers, told me back in, don't laugh, 1958, that an artist is never without a story as long as you tell the story about yourself. So this center square or panel is could be about me. Put my name right there in the middle. And then all the other panel squares around it, or in this case rectangles, would be a place for me to brainstorm ideas that relate to me. Well, I've done a lot of quotes about me, so I'm just passing it off. And I'm gonna do a quote maybe about one of my mentors, or it could be my parent, the person I think loves me the most, or my best friend. So you have lots of options. So the first thing you'll want to do is to think about what is this story going to be about? Maybe I will, yeah, I'll start with my grandmother. I'm gonna put grand mom. Catherine, and when you come down to the exhibit at the ward, you can see my grandma Catherine's quilt. And it's all done in her favorite colors. You're gonna get a kit today with um, a color backing and uh, the, uh, the uh, what I call the quilt sandwich. But as you're doing your own and extending it, think about what your favorite colors are, um, what your favorite designs, favorite different. So here I'm gonna put grandma Catherine in the middle and then these squares, Grandma Catherine. Catherine. So now the squares that come away, that anchor the corners, should be squares and ideas that come to mind that really let you know something about this person. Or the ones that are closest to it could be descriptive things. Like my grandma always had an apron. It was one of those fancy aprons with a little pocket and little flowers on it. And as I'm going, I can just make some notes to myself as I'm thinking about what these um, descriptors are. My grandma Catherine always wore, when she was out, a hat and gloves, always. And she loved her pearls jewelry, and what else can I say about grandma? Because she always carried her Bible. That was, that, those are sort of the characteristics of her. Then, so those things could be like here. What were the things she liked to eat, or you liked to eat? Grandma, we lived in Baltimore, she lived in Baltimore, but one of her joys was to come down to the Eastern Shore, to St. Michael's, and get crabs and to go on the cruise, you know, um, go on a cruise. So I'm gonna put, she loved steamed crabs, so it's food. She made the best soup ever. And she always told me that she loved me and that I could do whatever I would just, she said, aim for the Star for the moon. She said, aim for the moon. Because if you don't make it, you'll always be in the stars. 
So just doing some little basic brainstorming of ideas, whether you do it on a folded sheet of paper or you do it on the little post-it notes. Um, one of the things I like about the post-it notes is you can pick them up and move them around and um, decide you know, um, what's going to anchor. They could all be the same color. It really does not matter. But the whole idea is, what am I going to make this quilt about? What comes to mind? And what things might I add to my quilt? So you have that as a basic idea. And um, let's see. Oftentimes, I might suggest to people as you're starting is to do just sort of a paper collage. And you can start, if you didn't want, with a, just a plain piece of paper. There are magazine pictures you can use, paper. Um, I, I love patriotic stuff um, because there's a lot of patriotic work in my quilt and my quilt stories. So, or this. So you can take pictures from magazines and just sort of, again, brainstorm and put those things around you. You can use the scissors to cut things out and just do what I call part to whole to um, make your story. You know, these can be glued down or you could either trace them. And here's an idea that I really um, like to share with folks. Um, you could take this and actually put it on, I'm going to use this piece of fabric here, the light. If you hold this up to the light, to a window, you have an automatic light box and you can draw right on the fabric. So, um, and using a fabric mark or anything to make that as a part of your design, if you would like. So these are just ideas for you to sort of get started. I'm going to show you a couple of samples and um, maybe I'll show you uh, what you're going to get in the kit first and then do some examples of what you'll, how that you can work with that small square, that small quilt sample. So you got some ideas. What are you going to do? Okay, you are going to get, as I said, your top piece. And it should be a light color, if you will, so that your ideas, a lot of times, it's gonna be mostly covered up with the things that you put on top of it. But, um, and then you have a piece of batting that will give you that cushion and that quilt feel that you want. And then you have a piece that's a little bit larger. And I have here um, a couple little pins. Uh, you can use stick pins or you can use safety pins, it really does not matter. And what you're going to do is to place your middle piece right in the middle and you're going to gradually just fold this over just a tad bit. Um, you can fold the edge over um, and th this edge could be a half inch, an inch, it doesn't really matter, it just depends on how much fabric you have, but you just Gently fold it down to the edge of your top piece and then bring it over the edge. So what we're doing, it's really sort of doing a finished square or laying it out. So once you've pieced it together, all you have to do is do the sewing. Um, and I'll show you that in a moment. And so I do the opposite sides and I'm using the stick pins right now. You can use safety pins, whatever you have, um, which is whatever you have um, available to you. So once you fold it all four sides, one of the things that I'd like to suggest that you do is what I call mitering the corners. So let me pin this first side, I mean this fourth side down. And as I said, I don't know if I said earlier, ideally you could take an iron and press these to make it really neat um, at the same time. But 
So now we have our quilt sandwich here. For our little squares. Now, I want you to take a look at the corners. And I always suggest that you miter the corners. So um, by, in order to do that, you just turn the edge in, just like on a little triangle, and then fold it down. Can you see that? It just gives it a little bit of a more finished, um, more finished look. And then you can just sort of pin that in place. You see the difference in this corner and this one? What we could do is to go ahead and just stitch this around if you, we wanted to. And, oh, I have this, um, I have a needle here. Um, uh, and I want you to see, can you see the ends? And here's the needle. And it's like I'm going to hold it in my hand like a swing. And the needle, I'm going to tap on my index finger. Tap, 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 tap. And I'm going to lay this opposite end, the end of the thread, between my finger and the needle. See that? Tap, tap, tap. Thread goes between my finger and the needle. And then I'm going to See, I have like a little circle there, a little swing. And I'm going to wrap it around the point of the needle, maybe two or three times. And then I'm going to grab that thread and bring it down the needle, down the thread, and voila, I have a knot, a quilter's knot. Let's see if I can show you that with something bigger. So I've got a great big needle here and some purple yarn. So tap, tap, tap. That is really a big needle. I'm gonna lay the end of the thread into the round of the needle and I'm gonna wrap it once or twice, maybe three times, and then grab that part I wrapped and pull it down the needle and down the thread. This is a quilter's knot. Back in the day, people used to spit on their fingers and twist it. So during COVID times now, we have to be very safe. So I'll do that one more time for you so you can see it. Tap, tap, swing. And for those of you that, are, maybe I'll do this with my left hand, if I can remember to do that. Tap, tap, tap. Put this here, wrap this around, grab it with your finger and bring it down your thread so that you have a wonderful quilter's knot without having to make it dirty. All right, so I've got my thread and I'm not gonna finish this whole thing. I'm just going to start it uh, for you. And I think I'll go, I like to hide my thread or the end of my thread. So I'm gonna, come up from the back side, and I'm just going to push my needle through. Where's the needle here? And you can make your stitches um, long, tall, skinny, really close together. You know, it really doesn't matter. Um, it's whatever is comfortable for you, I should say, the more stitches you do, the smaller you make them, the neater it will be. And you just go in and out, and you go all the way through so that you're able to see a small stitch on the back. And I don't make my threads very long uh, because as you're quilting, quilters are always concerned about um, the stiffness in their um, you know, just sort of getting an ache in their arm. And um, you should try to, to vary some of your, uh, look at me, vary the, your stitches and the size of your stitch. So uh, oftentimes I will stitch out this way, pull the needle out, I may pull it out to the side. Um, and all you would, the first thing you would do would be 
you're framing your square. Some people like to use this at the very end. It's left up, it's really left up to you, but this now just sort of sets your little square. And while you're doing this, you probably are saying, does it matter what color I have? Well, you know, take the colors that you like. Um, uh, and if not, then you can keep adding things and adding the colors and your pattern, you're gonna see a lot of this blue disappear. So I'm not gonna take the time to do any more, but as you're stitching, let your arm go this way, go this way, go this way, and then constantly you're like rolling your shoulders so that you don't get that, um, you know, get a crook in your shoulder, your neck uh, as you do this. Uh, how long should this take you? Well, it just depends upon what kind of stitches you're making. And I usually try to suggest that you do um, some blind stitching. Uh, it can show if you like, or for the real blind stitching, you go down underneath the edge and you come right up on the very edge of it so that you can hardly see it, okay? Now that you have that or got an idea about how to do your square, your quilt sandwich here, once you've stitched it all around, taken out all your pins, you now are ready to do your design. Okay, so once you stitch this all around, oh, and I should say that when you get to the end of your thread, uh, remember that knot we made in the beginning? If you take your thread and your needle and bring your needle through the thread, and do that twice in the same spot, that'll lock it in and make a knot when you finish, like you had a knot when you got started, and then you can cut it. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on the side for a moment to now that we got our sort of our, our, our canvas, our quilt square, and we're ready to go. We go back to our design and say, what did I say? I Maybe my grandmother's name, um, might mean I'm gonna draw a face with some fabric markers, or I use, let me show you these. There are lots of things you can do. Um, this was a demo piece uh, that uh, one of the kids made um, to show, and I wanted you to be able to see that it is just a small piece of, um, of batting and the top square. And then I want you to notice they cut a hole in the top and before, and this is something you'd want to think about before you stitch it all the way around. Because if you think you want to uh, sort of uncover some things, cut a hole in this, you have to put the other color underneath before you uh, completely sew it up. So those are some options and things that you want to think about. Um, for the writing here, this is fabric paint. It comes in all colors and sizes. It's water soluble. It dries very quickly. And I'm gonna just write, write on this one. Let's see. You should squish it on something else. And you can draw right with it. making none of us love us. But this should be one of the last things you do because this takes about um, a half hour to an hour to completely dry. But if you wanted to put a person's name on here, you could use the fabric paints. You could use the fabric markers and write, write. I'm not gonna write on this one, but you could write, write on here. Um, Let's see, Gina, I love these markers because you notice the wedge point. These are uh, Tula uh, markers with primary colors. And I usually say to folks, you don't really need all the colors, but you can make the letters as even as you like. You can make them gigantic. You can go around letters and be as decorative. After all, it's your story and it's what you want to highlight um, as you do. 
Um, I say that your quilt square can carry not just the fabric that maybe belonged to someone, but it can carry the story of that person. So um, in this case, it's two little girls that were sisters. Um, that single panel, um, this one, I treated this like a single panel. Take a look at this. Um, I, I use, um, you can go online, I think it's called Soft Expressions, and you can buy them in bulk, it's cheaper to buy them in bulk. But this is so in fabric, or you can buy iron-on fabric. Um, and whatever you can put in your computer screen and you can print out on your printer, instead of using this paper here to print your design on or your words or your pictures, you would use this fabric sheet to put in your printer. So I'll pull this out. And this is like fascinating stuff. Um, and to be mindful that it is a fabric iron on or sew in, not transfer. Because this way, whatever is on your computer screen, when you put it in your printer, whichever way, if your printer goes in from the bottom and you put it in upside down like this, and when it rolls out, your design will be printed on this. Can you see these little numbers on the back? before you sew it and put it on your design or on your quilt square. I hesitate to pull this off right now because it'll hang up in the printer. But there's a thin piece of paper here that with that number on it, you can just peel it right off. Watch me not be able to do it with my eyeball with your fingers. But don't stitch this on your quilt square with the back paper still on it. So I just want to be sure of that. Um, and I really should not take it, oh, here you go. I just want you to be able to see. Can you see that up close? And so here is your fabric that when it comes out of your printer, it'll have whatever was on your screen. Words, faces, designs however you want to do it but this is the fabric that you can sew um, multiple ideas on so when you see my quilt squares and the quilts that are in my show with, with uh, pictures and images of buildings and faces and family and events and all of that is because I use the fabric sheets to put um, those faces on and then print them out I use decaps um, you can use anything, as I said, to tell your story. This was a demo piece. We did an um, uh, art drop-in and um, at the museum in Baltimore, and they wanted to celebrate. It was about Martin Luther King. So um, students were able to um, make their quilt square about him. It, the letters are iron-on. Um, I had some somewhere around here, but um, you see, oh, yes, yeah, here they are. Um, so these letters are gold. Um, they come in all different colors. And see, again, you just lay this down, and with your iron, um, with the young ones, make sure that there's a parent or an adult there with you who can help you with that heat uh, to do that. And you just press it and then this top piece will peel off and the heat will cause the other to stick to it. Again, this square has fabric markers, iron-on letters, different colors, it has decals. This was a piece of fabric that we printed um, on the fabric sheet. Um, look around and see if you have beads and buttons and anything that spells names that uh, you would want to use. This square is tiny, it's just the beginning square. So you might decide that this is only going to be about one person and what is it about that person 
you know, is it that they are, it's the love of your life, so you can take other materials you found, it's just a pink, two pink pieces of fabric, it's really a pin cushion, but if you wanted to stitch and sew this right in and then put the face right on top of it, um, then there are all kinds of options. Um, I had pieces from when I was bowling, so you know, it might be just the bowler and my face is here in the middle. Um, however, and again, these, um, these soap, they're like, they're meant to go on jackets. If you want to give it a sense of place, um, there's a little, um, there's a, what do you call it, a flag store uh, in Glen Burnie has flags for everything. Every county in the state of Maryland, every state in the nation, every country in the world. So if you wanted to put on that quilt where that person's from, just lots of things. And I keep little bags of just snippets of things because you just never know. My granny was always afraid of going across the bridge. <laughs> even though you had to get on the bridge to come down to um, that southern shore. But this might be something that I put on there saying, the bridge didn't stop her from getting crabs, getting her steam crabs. If you wanted to know that she's American, um, there's still little flags and things that you can use. You can fold them and squish them and however you want to stitch them on. She was a lover of flowers, so I'm always cutting out just little pieces that I can later sew on and um, just sort of look around. I am forever cutting up uh, t-shirts. Um, I always am looking for butterflies. I look for stars. Maybe money is important for the person. There's even fabric with money on it. So um, one of the just fun things that I like about this process is it's your quilt, it's your story. You can use anything and everything. I also use lots of doilies. So once you stitch this whole piece down, you might notice there's a piece of trim on this one tells a story of um, five generations of uh, Kappa men. I don't know if you know, it's a, um, a, it's a fraternity. And these men do goodwill throughout the community. And so for instance, whenever they have a conclave or big meeting where there are thousands of them present, they usually do build a house for humanity so that a person who lives in their convention city will have a new place to live. But this story quilt, square documents, um, early quilt squares had flowers and wreaths and things like that um, that they put. And these are just small pieces that you can cut up. Um, and then again, for anybody who can stitch, if you don't, these are stitched, embroidered, and then stitched on, if not, Go back to your fabric markers to put whatever words and things that you want on it. But this is one single panel with a piece of trim around the edge. And I like to say that would be the very last thing that um, you would do. I had some, you know, I love doilies. Look at what that does to the piece. Uh, in terms of just adding to that story. I mean, I could do that here as well. I have to remember that paint is wet. <laughs> so, um, but here's just sort of a single square. And I think what you'll find is that this is a tiny square, enough to get started, which is basically um, sort of um, almost a traditional size to begin. But if you think your story is even bigger, you can use handkerchiefs and just cut your centerpiece and square um, about an inch and a half or so smaller. And then you can use this space and do go through the same process. So as I'm doing this, quilting from the sole 
It's about using the materials and stuff that you have at home and it's okay. So maybe you don't have batting, but if you cut the front off the t-shirt, the rest of the t-shirt is sort of that same batting and filling that can be used in your quilt. Okay, so we've talked about the words, the size, and oh, so that here this way, you end up with a really nice bag. Uh, you could do this much larger. Um, I wanted to show you this, that this square actually was a rectangle and decided that rather than treating it as one single square, remember the design we did up front? It's like made this square, this quilt panel uh, sandwich large enough that I could divide it up into these numerous panels just in this one piece. You could have done a separate one, separate one, separate one, separate one, but this way. And then this one shows uh, techniques where that have been used to transfer photographs. Um, some of these are really tiny and small, so I think that as I recommend you to use pictures that are much fuller and you can really see the faces. And these are um, photographs that have been put on a window with a fabric marker and you draw right on the fabric. So there's so many sort of options that you can have to tell your story. In my quilts on exhibit, you'll notice that I use lots of safety pins. I, this certainly takes a lot of time. I don't know if you can get a close up of that, but using letter beads to make the important points that you want to be made. And it might be just the words of the person that you're telling your story about. Um, things that are encouraging um, that you make as a part of that. So it's usually at this point that it's like, okay, enough talking from me. Um, you got your samples, you got your practice material. Um, go ahead and think about what your story is gonna be like, um, whether you use the post-it notes or the drawing paper. Um, and start to look around for things. I think, you know, grandma loved music. So just a little sampling, just little things. And you pin them in place and then you eventually sew them on or glue them on with the paints or however. But I like to stitch them. Um, when you look at my work that's here in the museum, one of the joys I get is making the quilt three-dimensional. So I will go back in sometimes before I, like if I put the face on, before I iron it, I'll put batting underneath of it so it like blows up, it's like exploded, it's thick and sculptural. And then it just looks like the piece is more three-dimensional uh, from putting it. But that's like things down the line that you can do. There's so many things that you can do. And I think when you see my work in the gallery, I just, I look at it myself and in a, what I call, herbal moment that I do that because all of the things that I've talked to you today about, I've somehow incorporated them in the quilt. And I have, and you might want to do, I start having little bags of batting that I can use to like, if you notice, if I just put this underneath of here, just that pump of, see how three-dimensional that becomes, and then you can just sort of stitch around it to emphasize the things that you want. Um, I'm constantly saving ribbons and bands and trim uh, in order to add that to the end of the piece. Look at how that brings that out. Um, just going around it. So there's, you can use, as I said, quilting from the soul. It's your story. And you know, maybe the colors you will use will be the favorite colors of the person that this quilt square is about. 
Um, it could be, I mean, on one of my quilts, I have a um, Fruit Loops t-shirt, because Fruit Loops was my favorite cereal. Do you know? Um, I love big jewelry, so there's jewelry all in my work. Um, so as you go through, and if you're asking yourself, can I use this on my quilt? From A to Z in my work, there is something from the letter A to the letter Z that you can see throughout my work. I, there are lots of angels. There are lots of birds. Um, uh, see, I have like crosses and crabs for Maryland. Gives a sense of place. So um, it's your story. You tell your story. And start out maybe just with this beginning square. And you might just end up using only fabric markers to tell the story. You might decide you're going to cut through. You might decide you're going to find things to pin on. You might decide that you want to use letters of all kinds. Now, for those of you who do collage, and that's how many of mine started, initially I did paper collages and then put that collage on my printer and printed it out on that fabric sheet and then ironed it in place in my square and then started uh, embellishing it. That's the word, add the embellishments with the paints, with other fabrics. I'm constantly on the hunt for what will help me to tell this story. Do I need a picture of the face? I have, I cannot tell you the numbers of my quilts that have glasses on them, because I usually have big, bright glasses or sunglasses. They all have some kind of hat, but let your quilt square tell the story of yourself, like that pebble in the water as it ripples out. Tell the story of your family. Tell the story of your family and community. Move out what's going on in your county, what's going on in your state, what's going on across the nation. We are all within an umbrella of humanity. So where do you fit under that umbrella? Thank you for your time. Good luck.